This week in Western Water News, forever chemicals stay on the Superfund list. The Little Colorado River finally gets a cleanup. New Mexico overhauls its water courts. Utah finalizes a plan for the Great Salt Lake. And a new report warns the Colorado River could lose another fifth of its flow. Oh, and the federal government shut down again. But the drought monitor didn't miss a beat. Welcome to Western Water Weekly, where we bring you the biggest water stories from across the West, fast, clear, and grounded in facts that matter. The Environmental Protection Agency is keeping two notorious forever chemicals, PFOA and PFOS, on the federal Superfund list. These substances are known for lasting indefinitely in the environment and posing serious health risks. Administrator Lee Zeldin said the agency will move ahead with a new framework for future hazardous designations under the Superfund law. But there's a complication. Many cities and utilities that never produced PFAS, known as passive receivers, could still face cleanup liability. Zeldin says the agency will do what it can under current law, but needs new language from Congress to protect those communities. The EPA has also launched a national outreach initiative to help local water systems access funding and technical support as they deal with PFAS contamination. A global study released September 24th shows that climate change is reshaping how nutrients flow from land to sea. Rivers send up to 70 teragrams of nitrogen into coastal waters every year, while groundwater adds key elements like silicon and carbon. But melting glaciers, shifting rainfall, and rising seas are changing those flows. When ice disappears, the extra water disappears with it and salt water begins pushing inland. Nearly 80% of the world's low-lying coastal areas could face seawater intrusion by the end of the century. Fertilizer runoff, wastewater, and groundwater pumping add to the stress, changing the chemistry that supports marine life. Three quarters of all fish species depend on rivers at some stage of their life cycle. When nutrient pathways change, so do ecosystems and the livelihoods that depend on them. California cities are taking their water expertise worldwide. The city of Santa Ana deepened its partnership with Sahuayo, Mexico, to improve leak detection and treatment plant efficiency. At the same time, Los Angeles County's Roland Water District strengthened ties with the Norzagaray Water District in the Philippines, supported by the Asian Development Bank. The partnerships allow engineers to exchange practical experience in maintaining reliable drinking water systems. Santa Ana's city manager said these collaborations are shaping a brighter future for both communities. And Roland's general manager reminded everyone that water connects us all no matter where we live. The Environmental Protection Agency has approved a major cleanup to protect the Little Colorado River in northern Arizona from uranium contamination. Waste from two abandoned mines and part of a third will be relocated about a mile away into a new secure repository. Officials say the move will reduce radiation risks for Navajo communities and safeguard the watershed. Design work begins in 2026. Once completed, the old mine sites will be restored to more natural conditions. The new repository could eventually serve as a regional hub for waste from other abandoned mines, streamlining future cleanup efforts. The New Mexico Supreme Court has completely restructured how the state handles water cases. Starting October 1st, all water litigation will be managed through three regional systems rather than 13 separate districts. The goal is consistency, efficiency, and alignment with major river systems. Each region has designated judges and clerks who specialize in water law and all must complete continuing education in topics such as tribal water rights. The court hopes the change will make adjudications more uniform while preserving continuity in long-running cases. At midnight on October 1st, the federal government shut down after Congress failed to pass a budget. Roughly 900,000 federal employees are now furloughed, while another 700,000 are working without pay. For the Bureau of Reclamation, the agency that supplies water and power to much of the West, operations continue, but at reduced capacity. Critical employees like dam tenders, water schedulers, and power plant operators remain on the job to protect public safety. But about 240 employees are temporarily off-duty, and most administrative work is paused. If the shutdown lasts only a few days, the Bureau expects minimal disruption. If it stretches into months, larger programs could be suspended. But for now, water deliveries and hydropower generation remain stable.
Utah's state engineer has officially adopted the Great Salt Lake Distribution Management Plan. It establishes how water rights below the lake's meander line are measured, shared, and administered. The plan uses United States Geological Survey gauges to track lake elevation and determine priority schedules. It also introduces the Great Salt Lake Distribution Accounting Tool, a new system to monitor lake levels, inflows, and dedicated water, meaning water legally approved to stay in or flow to the lake for public or environmental purposes. A companion report mapped more than 70 monitoring sites and identified seasonal flow patterns that will help managers understand how water moves through the system. Together, these tools aim to make Great Salt Lake management more transparent and science-based. A new report from the Great Basin Water Network and partner groups warns that the Colorado River is in long-term decline. The river has already lost about 20% of its flow in the past 25 years, and scientists warn another 20% loss is possible. The report offers nine key reforms, from banning new dams and diversions, to honoring senior tribal water rights, to reducing waste in cities that rely on imported water. It also calls for improved data tracking, modernized dam infrastructure, and support for farmers to switch to less water-intensive crops. The authors stress that the river's laws don't need rewriting, but the mindset does. Their message, there are allocations on paper, and there are drops of water in reality. We must reconcile the difference. Finally, the latest drought monitor shows a mixed picture across the country. Heavy rains from Missouri to the northeast brought relief, but flash droughts developed in the southeast, and September remained unusually hot almost everywhere. In the Colorado River Basin, central and southern Arizona received over two inches of rain, enough to improve drought status, though flooding was severe in some areas. New Mexico also improved while Utah saw drought expand in the south. Colorado and Wyoming benefited from front-range storms, but California stayed mostly dry. Looking ahead, the forecast calls for continued warmth across most of the basin, with the best chances for rain centered over Arizona and New Mexico next week. And that wraps up this week's Western Water Weekly. From PFAS to the Great Salt Lake, one theme stands out. Water policy never stands still. For details about these stories or for fresh news delivered every day except Sunday, visit western-water.com. Thanks for watching and see you next week.